made it to the Hanoi Hilton complex, although we didn't know exactly where we were at the time. My pal and I were separated. Uh, we spent the first week in isolation, which is primarily uh, an attempt to see one is if you're going to survive your injuries and also for the North Vietnamese to do an assessment of whether you were susceptible to propaganda. So every day was a day of uh, crisis. It was boredom was a good day and, and isolation. So there was a matter of surviving injuries and surviving interrogations. So that went on for a week. Then they moved us out of the section of the Hanoi Hilton, which we were in, which is called New Guy Village. Moved us to another section of the camp where we went from pure isolation into solitary confinement. I spent the bulk of the next uh, two months mostly at a camp called the Zoo. Uh, and then after 75 days, they reunited me and my pilot back in another section of the Hanoi Hilton called uh, Heartbreak Hotel, which was a little room that was six feet by eight feet. Uh, but we had a roommate. We lasted there for two weeks. And then as 1972 progressed, more and more POWs, more and more American airmen were being shot down. So the population in North Vietnam was increasing. Uh, so in May of 72, we got moved into the Hanoi Hilton complex proper that we call Camp Unity, which was the rooms that are about the size of uh, 30 or so people. And that's where we started to have more and more people connected. Communications was easier. Uh, having roommates was really great. Uh, being left alone, being bored was good. Uh, food was modest. It was uh, a lot of bulk, not a lot of nutrition. So things like kohlrabi, and cabbage, and beet curd, uh, pumpkin, a little bit of bread, uh, no meats, no vegetables. Uh, but a good day was being left alone, a good day was no interrogations, a good day was no punishment. Uh, the guys that were there longer than us, we were the new era, the 1972 era. So there were POWs that were there from August of 64 until when I was there in 72. So some of them have been there in excess of seven years. And once we got into the camp proper, Camp Unity, our job was to communicate with the older POWs uh, give an update on what's been going on in the United States because many of them have had no new news since the summer of 68. So we had to update them on four years worth of news. Fortunately, over those years, uh, treatment of American prisoners had improved a bit. Uh, it was a combination of realizing that they were going to get very little intelligence from us, but also the war was winding down so dramatically that from a high in 67, 68 of 500,000 troops, by the time in the summer of 72, I think we were less than 75,000. So I think the inevitability of having to return POWs was significant, uh, and they probably couldn't afford to have a bunch of zombies going out, you know, ill-fed and, and ill-treated. So that helped a little bit. Uh, but communications was good. Meeting the guys that have been there that made it easier for us younger guys on a day-to-day -day basis was significant. Uh, and also, you know, seeing what they went through and their state of mind being remarkably good when we got a chance to meet with a few of them really compelled us to do a better job of, of our own resistance techniques and following the code of conduct.